Imagine the most fearsome machine on the battlefield, the tank, a monster of steel, armor, and firepower built to crush everything in its path. But what if I told you that its fate was sometimes decided by an ordinary tree? Yes, the same log you might see lying on the ground. We'll show you how one small log could change the course of battles, help tanks survive where others sank into the mud, and how this simple detail became a true symbol of wartime engineering genius. You'll hear stories that chill the blood and solutions so simple they would surprise even modern engineers. Anyone who has ever seen a tank in action knows it's not just a hunk of metal on tracks. It's a precise machine where every part has a purpose. Armor, gun, engine, everything is calculated down to the millimeter. But look deeper and you realize that even the simplest things can play a decisive role. One such element, often overlooked, is the ordinary log. At first, it seems ridiculous. Why would a fearsome war machine drag a piece of wood? The answer lies in real battlefield conditions, where nature can be just as ruthless as the enemy. One of the first major tests came during the Battle of the Somme in 1916. The fighting lasted for months, and this was the first time Allied armored vehicles appeared on the front. The effect was dramatic. German troops were shocked, and the Allies suddenly had a chance to break through fortified lines. But victory came with problems that seem amusing today, yet had serious consequences at the time. The British planned to use nearly 50 tanks, but only about a third made it into battle. The rest got stuck in mud or broke down mechanically. This revealed a crucial truth. A tank is a massive machine, nearly impossible to move by human strength alone. Even dozens of soldiers couldn't pull a stuck vehicle free, and towing equipment often snapped under the weight of the armor. The turning point came when engineers and crews discovered a solution that was simple yet brilliant. All they needed was a log, a natural material available almost anywhere. That log became a kind of bridge under the tank's tracks, giving them enough grip to push the machine out of even the deepest mud. The method was straightforward. The log was placed across the tracks, secured with cables, and the engine was powered up. Slowly, the heavy machine climbed onto the trunk and pushed itself out of the mud trap. Over time, this approach became standard practice. In the Soviet Union during World War II, tanks were routinely equipped with what crews called a self-recovery log. A clean, trimmed tree trunk was strapped to the hull and carried everywhere, ensuring that no swamp or muddy stretch could become an impassable obstacle. The idea seemed primitive, but in reality, it was a brilliant blend of engineering logic and frontline experience. The vast forests of the Soviet Union offered endless access to material, allowing crews to use nature itself in combat conditions. This log didn't just help move the vehicle, it preserved the tank's combat readiness, saved precious time and resources, and most importantly, protected the crew operating in harsh and unpredictable environments. What started as a simple piece of wood eventually became an essential part of tank equipment. Soviet engineers and tank crews understood that on the enormous landscapes of their homeland, any swamp or muddy road could stop even the most powerful machine. Every kilometer could become a challenge without this simple yet ingenious tool. A log allowed tanks to cross these obstacles quickly and efficiently, turning a deadly trap into nothing more than a temporary inconvenience. The secret lay in the combination of tank weight and the shape of the log. When a heavy vehicle rested on the smooth surface of the trunk, it essentially crawled along it, increasing track grip on the ground. The cables held the log in place, guiding the movement and giving the crew full control. This made the method universal. 
It worked on swampy plains, in dense forests, and even on ruined roads where any machine risked sinking into loose soil. During World War II, the use of logs became widespread. Tank crews carried them everywhere, fastening them to the hull and using them whenever needed. One major advantage was speed. Within minutes, a log could be cleaned, secured, and placed under the tracks. What might have turned into a disaster became a manageable situation. Tanks no longer depended solely on tow vehicles or the strength of soldiers. They gained autonomy on the battlefield, which often determined the outcome of entire operations. What's remarkable is that this method remained relevant even as tanks continued to evolve. Their weight increased, engines grew stronger, armor became thicker, yet the logs stayed useful. The reason was simple. No machine, no matter how advanced, can completely escape the power of nature. Ice, snow, mud, collapsed bridges, all of these obstacles continued to challenge even the most modern vehicles and often the simplest solution worked best. This is where wartime engineering brilliance reveals itself. Complex problems are solved with practical, elemental tools. The log also offered psychological support for the crew. Tankers knew that in any difficult situation, they had a tool that wouldn't fail. That confidence allowed them to act faster, take bold decisions, and avoid wasting time on frantic attempts to dig the tank out manually. In war, every moment counts, and the ability to free the machine quickly could change the entire course of a battle. As technology advanced, more sophisticated self-recovery devices appeared. Yet the simple log still retained its place in military history as a symbol of practical ingenuity. It united engineers, soldiers, and nature into a single system where even the smallest detail could determine survival. The method showed that sometimes the most basic solutions turn out to be the most effective, and the line between defeat and victory can be drawn by an ordinary piece of wood. The use of logs in combat demonstrated not only their practical value, but also the tactical flexibility of tank units. When facing an impassable section of terrain, a crew could choose the safest direction based on the obstacles and the landscape. Sometimes they only had seconds to act before mud or a flooded ditch stopped the entire column. In moments like these, the log became a key tool. It was placed under the tracks on the move, keeping the machines advancing without interruption. This method became especially important in Eastern Europe where marshy lowlands alternated with forests and open fields. In such conditions, any tank without a way to free itself became an easy target. The enemy reacted quickly to a stuck machine, using artillery or infantry to destroy a vehicle that couldn't move. But the log gave crews the ability not just to escape the mud, but to continue moving towards safer ground, avoiding direct contact with enemy forces. As the war went on, tank crews refined the technique. Sometimes they used several logs placed parallel to each other to create temporary pathways across the softest ground. Crews adjusted the angle, length, and diameter of the logs, choosing the best option for their specific tank model. What seemed like a simple piece of nature became a complex engineering tool fully integrated into battlefield tactics. The log also affected the speed of entire operations. During offensives, every minute mattered. A tank that could free itself didn't slow down the whole column. This helped maintain the momentum of the advance, support infantry on time, and keep the initiative on the battlefield. A simple wooden trunk sometimes delivered results that surpassed new technical inventions precisely because it worked regardless of engine condition or mechanical failures. All it required was proper placement and an experienced crew. Stories from many fronts confirm the method's universality. In one episode, a column of Soviet tanks advanced through a heavily flooded marshy area Vehicles equipped with logs passed the dangerous section without delays, while tanks without them became trapped almost immediately. 
situations like this repeated dozens of times during training, marches, and real combat. The log became a symbol of reliability and resourcefulness, helping tank crews handle nature's unpredictable challenges. Even in a world of powerful machines, nature remained a force that had to be respected. The log proved that simple solutions can neutralize complex problems when engineering intuition, practical experience, and knowledge of the terrain come together. The method stayed relevant for decades, showing that some of the greatest innovations lie right under our feet, if we know how to use them. Over time, the role of the log became not only practical, but symbolic. It represented the brilliance of simple solutions and the ability of human ingenuity to overcome even the harshest conditions. Tanks equipped with this natural tool became more than machines. They were complete systems where humans, technology, and nature worked together as one. This practice proved that engineering genius isn't always found in complicated mechanisms or electronics. Sometimes it comes from combining weight, friction, and basic natural material. That simplicity made the method so reliable. The log didn't break, didn't need fuel, and could always be replaced on the spot. A crew equipped with such a tool had a freedom of action no machine could provide on its own. It was thanks to solutions like this that tanks kept their mobility even in the most unpredictable conditions. On the front, where any obstacle could become critical, a log helped maintain the momentum of an attack, avoid equipment losses, and support infantry at the right moment. Every successful use strengthened the crew's confidence and increased the army's effectiveness. One simple tree trunk allowed a heavy machine to keep moving when everything seemed lost. In time, the self-recovery log became part of military history, appearing in manuals and archives as an example of practical engineering brilliance. Even as tanks grew more advanced, with more powerful engines and thicker armor, the old method still had value. It proved that nothing on the battlefield is insignificant. Even the simplest detail can decide everything. Today, looking at modern tanks, you can still see echoes of this idea. Self-recovery systems, auxiliary devices, and advanced obstacle crossing tools all evolved from the principle built on simplicity and reliability. But the roots trace back to the most basic object of all, an ordinary log that once saved tanks, preserved mobility, and kept operations moving forward. This detail reminds us that military technology isn't only about complex innovations. It's the art of finding solutions where none seem to exist, the ability to turn a piece of nature into a vital element of a sophisticated system. The log became the symbol of that idea. Simple, dependable, effective, and forever part of history. Proving that sometimes the greatest victories come from the most elementary things.